Okay, so now that we have our JSON response, more like a response from the API, this is exactly what we see here in our console. We need to go ahead and pass the JSON string so that we'll be able to access the information that we really want. So we're gonna go back to open weather website. So this is what the API response looks like, right? So you can see that it has different JSON properties, weather, base, main, wind, clouds, rain, DTCs, blah, blah, blah. But we don't want all of this. So the things that are important to us are the weather description, which in this case is broken clouds, and the temperature, which here is 293, I think is Fahrenheit, and also we want the place name and we want the country code as well. So these are just a few information that are important to us. So all we need to do will be to pass this entire JSON in such a way that it becomes a JSON object so that we can now go ahead and access these attributes that are important or useful to us. So to be able to do this, there is a particular Nugget package we'll need to install that will help us pass our JSON. So let's go back to Visual Studio. So we're gonna go to our Nugget Package Manager. We're gonna install newtonsoft.json. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and install this. So our, so newtonsoft.json has now been installed successfully. So we're gonna go back to our main activity. So I'm gonna close this up so that'll create more space. So the first thing we need to do will be to say, Var. I'm going to call this result object. This will be equal to J object. This stands for JSON object. So we're going to go ahead and resolve this by bringing in the newtons of JSON nugget package we just installed. Okay, so have the J object the pass. And here we're going to pass it our result. That's the result that we obtained from our API. So the next thing will be to start fetching the things that are important to us. First of all, we need the weather description. So I'm gonna define a new string and call it weather description. And this will be equal to, now I need to explain how to fetch items from a JSON object. Let's return to the open weather website. So let's take for instance, weather. Weather is a property and inside of it, it has an array. So that's why we see this block bracket. So this signifies an array. It means that it could contain more than one item. So inside of this array, it has only one item, which is why we see this curly bracket here. So if you think of this like an array, this item occupies the zero index, right? So if you put weather and with this block bracket and you pass it zero, it was supposed to return this item. Now, inside of this item, we need to go ahead and access the description. So when we get to Visual Studio, we are going to write our code that is going to fetch this description in this order. So when we start writing the code, we're able to understand why we are doing the things we are doing. So let's go back to Visual Studio and write the code that will retrieve our weather description. So weather description will be equal to result object. So inside of the result object, which is the entire JSON string we just passed to an object, right? We're gonna first of all pass our weather, which is the first key, okay? So we're gonna pass our weather, which is the key or the property that we are looking at, first of all, as I already explained. So the next would be to select the first item in the weather property, which is zero, because this is an array, like I already explained. So we're gonna impute zero here. And the next will be to go ahead and point to our description, which we can see here. We have weather and we have the zero item, which is this, and we have our description, which is this. So we're gonna go ahead and type description here. Boom. And because this is a JSON object, we need to convert it to string. So we'll now add to string. So this is how to successfully retrieve our description. But this is not all, we also need to retrieve the weather icon, which is this, we need to retrieve this. We're gonna have to do the same thing that we just did. It's just that instead of having description, we now have icon. So we now say string icon, this will be equal to result object, 
weather zero and icon so this will retrieve our icon for us i forgot to add to string so this will go ahead and retrieve the icon id for us okay so the next thing we need to retrieve will be the temperature so to retrieve the temperature we have to first of all access this key the main key so inside of main we can now have temperature in this particular scenario it is represented with temp so let's go back to visual studio and write this out so we're gonna say string temperature this will be equal to result object we're gonna type main here because main is the key that we are looking at and we're gonna type temp here so temperature is the value that we actually want to retrieve so we're gonna go ahead and have to string boom so this will retrieve our temperature so the next thing we need to do will be to retrieve the place name which you can simply do by saying string place name this will be equal to result object we're gonna pass in name as the key or convert this to string boom so this will give us our place name so another trivial one is our country id so our country id we can find it in sys sys key and country property so we're gonna point to this property to be able to retrieve our country id so let's go back to visual studio so we're gonna say string country this should be equal to result object sys and country we're going to convert this to string so now that we have all of this information of a particular place or a particular city we're going to go ahead and display this on our app so we're going to go ahead and say weather description test view the test will be equal to weather description okay and the next will be to say place test view the test this will be equal to place name and we're going to concatenate it with our country code have country boom so the last one will be the temperature so we're going to have temperature test view the test this will be equal to temperature boom so you can see everything is now coming together now let's go ahead and run our app and ensure that everything come out the way we wanted it boom so our app is ready to rock and roll so i'm gonna go ahead and type in london so let's click on check weather so it's checking our weather in the background boom so as you can see everything worked just the way we expected it so you can see the temperature 22.93 and the weather description is scattered cloud and we retrieved the place name and also the country code right so this is exactly what we want to have but now last thing we need to do in this particular lecture is to make it in such a way that this scattered card will have a titled case in such a way that the s will start a capital letter and the c will be a capital letter as well so to do that i'm going to go back to visual studio so i'm going to go ahead and format our weather description so I'm going to say weather description will be equal to culture info. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and bring in this namespace, system.globalization. So dot invariant culture dot test info dot to title case. So we're going to pass in our weather description to this method. So let's go ahead and run our app again to ensure that everything works the way we expected it. okay so now our app is running so let's go ahead and impute london again so we're going to click on check weather boom so you cannot see that um, the weather description the sky started with a capital x and the clouds started with a capital c as you can see that performing something asynchronously requires that you communicate to the user that you're doing something right but currently our app doesn't have anything that tells the user that we are fetching the data that you should wait or something like that so in the next lecture we're going to be seeing how to add a progress bar a custom progress bar to our app so guys see you in the next class